welcome to the second part of my single speed slash fixy conversion build on a budget. In this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to turn a standard road bike into a single speed bike. And I've cobbled together the bits I need in order to do that. And thanks to everyone that commented on the first video. I love reading your comments and so many great ones. And thanks to everyone that voted as well on the poll in the app about whether or not you want to see me build a wheel with a flip-flop hub in it. Overwhelmingly, you all voted in favor of me doing that. So I, that is something I'm going to do, but I need to get the bits together so that I can do it. And if you've got any suggestions of components that you think I should use in this, please fire them down in the comments because it is something that I haven't done before. So some of you guys might have some excellent ideas. So this week, I'm not going to build the flip-flop hub wheel because I still need to order the requisite hub spokes and rims. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is show you how you can convert a standard freewheel road bike hub into a single speed one. Because I still figure that this is a really valuable thing that I can show people how to do. And there aren't many videos out there on this. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got these wheels here, which are Vision Team 30s. They're really nice. And they're actually an alloy wheel set, even though they look carbon. And you may recognize them as being on John Canning's cheap bike to super bike build. Yes, I've pilfered them. <laughs> So doing it this way won't make a fixed gear bike, it will be a single speed bike because you'll still be able to coast on it as you've still got this free hub uh, at the back. And to do this, I've picked up a conversion kit. Now you can get these conversion kits for about 15, 20 pounds. I'm guessing probably about $20 as well if you're in the States. So not much money at all. Um, and what they allow you to do is to put a single cog on the back. Also, it contains a little chain uh, tensioner as well. Incidentally, there was a great comment under last week's video from Kai Manig, who said that the German word for chain tension is beautiful and it's Kettenspannung. Quite like that. So we're gonna work on the Kettenspannung. So this next thing I'm gonna show you is just ridiculous. This is the other part of the drivetrain. One of the benefits of being friends with XGB track riders is that they have amazing bits boxes. Bits boxes that are better than the, you know, actual stuff that a lot of people have on their bikes, ridiculous. So Manon happened to have a Jura Ace track chain set lying around. So that's what I'm gonna put on my budget build. But these things are blooming amazing. They're so nicely made. Um, and I'm gonna replace this one out there. I've also got a new bottom bracket to go in there. This is a BSA English threaded bottom bracket. So it'll fit perfectly with this. Um, now you can, like I said last week, use a standard chain set and simply take that outer chain ring, put that on uh, the inner position, um, and then it can kind of work. But you know, I, I wanna do this good. So I'm gonna do it properly and get a track chain set on there because let's make this a cool build. The only downside is that the chain ring that she's got is a 52, which is massive for a bike like this. <laughs> Especially uh, where we are, which is in the city of Bath, which is really hilly if you don't know it. That's gonna be too big for me. I've got a smaller 45 chain ring on order, um, which I'm gonna put on the bike, which I think will be better because you know gear ratios are important. I'm gonna go into more detail in the next video on gear ratios and how you can calculate them and how it affects the performance of a fixie. It's, it's more relevant to a fixed gear bike than a single speed, but we'll, we'll go into more detail next time. But for just the sake of setting a bike up and making it look cool, I'll put this 52 on today. <coughs> So what I'm doing is just cleaning the threads with a bit of degreaser, a bit of muck off, just to clean the threads before I put in the new bottom bracket. The, the threads are re in really good condition on this bike. Um, I love English threaded bottom brackets, but it's uh, there's a bit of dirt on just the outer threads. So just trying to get rid of that. And then we'll put in my nice new 105. <laughs> Just putting 
the chain ring on the Jura Ace track chain set. And I have to say, these components, it's proper nerdy this, but they are just like proper, proper nice. So just a quick, a quick maintenance tip for you. And I've said this before, but when you're putting chain rings on a crank set, put all the chain ring bolts in just sort of like loosely like I'm doing now. So they're all in place and then go around with a torque wrench. So don't do them tight at first. Then you go around with the torque wrench and get them to all the same torque, even all the way around. Got my uh, track chain set installed. New bottom bracket, nice, like it. Uh, an important detail about uh, chain sets uh, when you're doing a single speed conversion, especially if it's a fixie conversion, is crank length. Now, if you're doing it from a road bike, often the uh, bottom bracket is gonna be lower than what you're gonna get on a dedicated fixie. And as a result, your pedaling clearance has to be something to consider. Because of this, riders will often select shorter length cranks so that they're less likely to clip a pedal as they're pedaling round corners. Um, now, this being a single speed at the moment and not a fixie, it's not the end of the world. Um, and also, uh, I've got the cranks on here are a bit shorter than what I'd normally use. So these are 170s. I'd normally go 172.5. So that's a little bit space. And also, another way you can improve pedaling clearance is by the pedals you use. And I use speed plays, which do have a better clearance than um, other pedals such as Shimano or Look. So I'm going to take the wheel out now. Cannings' wheel. Uh, we'll take the cassette off the back here and then I'll start playing around with getting a cog on and uh, some spacers on the free hub body. Now depending on where you put these different sized spacers on the free hub body you can tune the position of that rear sprocket and that's really important for getting the chain line absolutely bang on like spot on and straight. Now a straight chain line is really important in a single speed, really important in a fixie as a straight chain line determines efficiency. And it's also really annoying, like if, if your chain line isn't straight, the drivetrain will be really noisy and no one wants that, they want it nice and smooth and quiet. Now that, I can see that that chain line isn't, isn't right. I've not, I've not got the chain on yet, but I can see that the sprocket needs to come more this way outboard, so. We'll, we'll do that first. That, that looks pretty good to me. We'll go with that, right? I'll go with the, put the chain on, test it and see if that's, that's all good. made a little bit of a boo-boo this week, which is that the chain that I've got for six quid is the wrong gauge for this beautiful Jura Ace chain ring, which means I'm either gonna have to change the gauge on the chain ring, get a different chain ring on there, or I'm gonna have to get a chain that actually fits. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a chain that fits. So apologies that I can't do this today. What am I? An idiot sandwich. It's quite embarrassing actually. But, you know, this is the kind of thing that when you build a bike, like, you know, you do this kind of project, things like this, in, you know, inevitably hurdles appear along the way. And this is one such case. But something else is that, you know, when you are using a quick release wheel and you're adapting a free hub wheel to go into this kind of dropout, it's going to be difficult to adjust the chain tension because you're, you're securing the wheel by way of a quick release, which can never generate as much torque as actually bolting wheels into the frame, which is what you do with a track bike. You, you, know, you have cone spanners and you do either side, and that holds the wheel with much more force. With a quick release, if I pull the wheel out of the dropout to like there and then try and bolt it hard in place with a quick release, it's the chain tension is constantly gonna be pulling against that quick release and it will slowly slacken it and just pull it closer into the frame and then you'll lose chain tension. What I'm thinking is that if you are gonna go down this uh, quick release option of converting a hub, then 
one of these sort of chain tensioners is going to be a better, better solution. But that's why I don't want to do it. That's why I want to do a full on wheel build with a flip flop hub, because then don't think I'll need a chain tensioner. So the saddle I'm putting on is a Physique Alliante. I normally ride a, an Arione, but um, I thought, you know, I quite fancy trying a, an Alliante. So I've got one lying around with the alloy rails on it. Nice one. God, this saddle clamp is a right faff. Got the road saddle on. I'm just going to take off the uh, extensions and the cables now. Um, you can actually save the cables and extensions, but I don't need them because I have gears. So I'm going to do it the quick way to save time, which is just to cut them. <laughs> so I'm going to take these bars off and put on my nice drop bar and other jobs that I need to sort out next week are I'm going to remove this stem um, <laughs> and get one that doesn't look as excited and also get one that's longer because this is a bit too short, this stem now for a drop bar. I'm also going to remove the chimney because, I mean, what would Manon say at the sight of that? That is an abomination. So we're going to get rid of that and I'll attach on the brake levers. <coughs> So unfortunately, I've run out of time for this week's video um, and I've not been able to do everything that I wanted to do. So next week I will be putting the brake levers on and some bar tape to match this saddle. Also sorting out the chimney and putting on a different stem and hopefully I'll have a chain that fits. So apologies for that and I need to get on with the wheel build as well uh, for the other method, but we'll do that. So yeah, hopefully next time I can get all that stuff done. But I have to say, I am I'm loving this and I'm really pleased with how it's shaping up. I think, I think it looks proper cool. Like, I really like it, but let us know in the comments section what you think of it. And if you like fixed gear content and you want to see us do more on the channel, liking and sharing this video will, uh, will help us do more in the future. So, you know, please do that and keep your suggestions coming in for components and stuff that I can put on the bike. But until then, I'll see you later. <laughs>